very much a player that's been around for a while and has seen some success in the past. So let's head on over to the game and see which of these ADP decks is going to come around and be successful. I think we're, we're going to see lots of parallel plays going on here, Joe. Yeah, these guys actually have, I think, around three cards different between them, and neither of them are playing Crushing Hammer, so essentially they're both just trying to get their plan A off as much as possible. I think the player going first, they just need to go, I'm going to be the pace setter, I'm going to have an energy drop each turn, I'm going to try and get that GX attack, I'm going to put the ball in my opponent's court to try and sort of mirror that setup without putting down easy basics that can get KO'd. Looks like we're starting with Ricardo on the top. He started with the optimal lead for him, that Arceus Dialgopalkia. He can also go ahead and establish that Viridian Forest. So he's already checked two big things off his list. He's got that turn one energy drop onto his main Pokemon. And Lucas started with a Dedenne GX, which you never want to put down in this matchup if you can help it. No, it's just an easy free prize Pokemon time we see the Altered Creation GX come in. And if you're going to have to play it, at least get yourself a new hand of six cards. Having it being a liability on the field without having actually done anything to help you, it's... We, we love to Dene GX, but this is not why we love it. Yeah, Ricardo also chose to discard a Crobat V from his hand. That's a great indication that, at the very least, he has a supporter, but also a little micro play is that you're playing around Morwild GX. You don't want Morwild to pull these sorts of Pokemon into play because then it allows Luca to have easier prizes later on. So we just see the attachment of the Water Energy. Obviously, neither of these, playing, uh, these players are using Crushing Hammers. Uh, both players know the opponent's deck list, so he can freely throw the water energy down, play around Marnie as best as possible, and also end on an Intrepid Sword. Ideal turn for him. Luca already has a couple of tough decisions, does have Quick Ball, can go ahead and establish the Arceus Dialga Palkia pretty quickly, and then he may be forced to play a Professor's Research here to dig deeper into the deck. Might have to be. Like you say, you've got some of the pass. That Viridian Forest is going to go and get yourself one of the energy you need, which is lovely. And, you know, you've got that quick ball, which is going to get yourself presumably the ADP or maybe a Zashin. It really depends which one you which one you want more early on. And a Zashin will give you the Intrepid Sword at the end of your turn if you're not attacking, which, given Luca's hand, is quite unlikely. So, yeah, we do see the Zashin coming out there, or we would imagine. Still a little bit of thinking. But I think you're right. It's going to have to be a Professor's Research, which means you've lost two Switch. You've lost one of your boss's orders, bearing in mind how much this deck loves going after those bench Pokemon. So, not ideal, but at least Luca's got something going on here. Yeah, I think Luca really was hoping that, thanks to the Viridian Forest being in play, he was hoping he could have an easy discard of a Metal Energy, grab another Metal Energy, try and get some Saucer for aggressive Zation plays here. The Professor's Research doesn't help him do that at all, really. So he was going for Aggro uh, Zashin as, as the initial plan here. As the hand stands, he may still be forced to go for the ADP instead. And that is what we are going to eventually see here. So I like that he went for the Zashin first. It gave him the aggressive option as an alternate route here. Because, let's face it, his board state is behind. He's an energy drop behind, and there's an awkward Dedenne GX on the field. So I don't mind him taking an alternate approach here. But uh, so far, he is still debating things. He could still go for quick fall aggressive plays. But instead, the ADP is finally going to come down. He can begin using Viridian Forest here as well to thin. I don't think he needs uh, energy switch so much. Probably his weakest card in his hand when he doesn't have to play around um, Crushing Hammer. He's actually going to go ahead and keep that and get rid of the Marnie. I actually really like keeping Marnie in this hand, to be honest, because... He knows that Ricardo is guaranteed to GX next turn. The stadium's sticking in play. He can go ahead and GX. And then you really want to disrupt the hand size that, the, that Ricardo sat on because you do not want them to use boss's orders on your Dedenne. Then they just fly ahead with... Luca's got a chance though. here, Joe. Yeah. Luca's got a chance of the turn one GX attack. All yeah, he needs is a Metal Saucer. Metal Saucer would do it here. He's got the energy in the discard. He's got the water energy. He's got the energy switch. He's got the Pokemon in the active that can get out of the active. This Crobat to four, if he pulls a Metal Saucer, he's got the turn one GX attack. He does push for it. He and does he does! Metal Saucer. Okay, so, so he does it on his head a little bit. That's huge! Turn one GX attack, so no longer a turn behind, no longer an energy attachment behind. I was looking at that play, and while you were talking, I was running it through in my head, and I'm like, I'm not miscalculating here, am I? <laughs> I am not. Luke has got the turn one GX attack. That is huge! So it's one of those gambles where you say, okay, either I can try and money my opponent out of boss's orders, or I can try to 
just go far ahead. And it's a good hedge here, to be honest. When you're already holding on to that energy switch, he only needed one combination piece, which, you know, has paid off really well for him. Now he's on the front foot. He's going to get that first attack in. And he's also trying to deny Ricardo from actually using any of his own the Dene's or Crobats this turn in fear of getting boss's orders back. That is great. I mean, Ricardo was sitting there. Like, you, you see the game he's playing. Ricardo's like, right, I'm going first. I've got the first attachment. I am fairly sure I'm going to get the first GX attack. And most of the time, you're right. But Ricardo being in that position and not getting the first GX attack, that really puts Luca on a great, great stead here. I mean, Luca's really hoping Ricardo plays a Dedene because then that great <laughs> catcher will just grab it straight away. It's unlikely. And like you say, Ricardo's got to be really careful here because a single energy on that ADP and Viridian Forest is in play means that we would see a KO on a Crobat, on a Morile, or on a Dedene, on those kind of Pokemon. So Ricardo's got to try and do it without playing those Pokemon. And bearing in mind, Luke has already played two of them, which isn't great for him. Yeah, bench management is the name of the game for Ricardo now. He can't catch up in terms of attacks, but if he can use boss's orders, he takes the initial three prize KO. So, you know, there's no way that Luca can establish a KO here outside of him using uh, his own Morwell GX at this point. Ricardo does have a large hand size, um, so just something to bear in mind. Uh, but it looks like Luca is just going to be forced to win the game in three turns by two hit KOing the active, and then having a one hit KO with his Zacian onto Ricardo's. That's his prize map. Uh, whereas Ricardo is hoping to use boss's orders next turn. Absolutely. We do see thinking about the great catcher there. Could bring up the zero energy ADP and kind of force Ricardo to have some kind of switching card. We know that ADP does play a bunch of switching cards, but it does look like that's the way it's going to go here and really just make Ricardo have one more thing. Essentially, like you say, win the game in three turns rather than two. Well, let's slow it down a bit. Yeah, make him have boss's orders as well as just the raw switch in hand uh, is definitely better for him. We are going to see the professor's research here. He has that manual attachment that can now be a water energy if, if he'd like to. He's already got enough liabilities in play that playing this more well, I do really like. The hand size is large, and if they don't have boss's orders plus switch in hand, they actually don't either. They have air balloon, but Arceus Diagopalkia has a three retreat cost. So this combination of Morwell GX with that captivating wink <laughs> is monstrous. That was a pretty good wink. Although I do feel a bit sad for Luca that he played the great catcher and then got the Morwell to put the Tadene onto the bench. A little bit too slow. But we do see a bunch of damage coming down here. And of course, you do get to attach those free energy to one of your Pokemon. So that is absolutely huge here. Basically setting up having the energy, sorry, to your Pokemon generally does not all have to be on the same one. And I mean, Luke has got a good board position here and Ricardo needs quite a bit to start keeping up. They need to top deck, essentially. Uh, or they need to play Professor's Research and find their own great catcher. That's the only two options that they have. I'm surprised that we don't see the Viridian Forest or any attachment at all here. So he's going for a Zacian play instead. Uh, Ricardo does play two copies of Rusted Sword, so he could try and have a response KO here, uh, saying that that's higher odds than finding his one copy of Great Catcher. So he's looking for Saucer Saucer Energy onto his Zacian, as well as a Rusted Sword. And uh, so far, a research, possibly more push potential. Ricardo does play three copies of Dedene GX, so he's likely to also slam another one down this turn, unless he does have access to Great Catcher here. We've seen a manual attachment onto the ADP, so I think Zashin is out at this stage. Does he have the Great Catcher? No, it's just an ultimate ray. And what we see here is, like I talked about parallel plays earlier, Ricardo is just doing what Luca did, but a turn behind. And at some point, you've got to switch that. You cannot just match your opponent one turn back. Oh, Luca here, however, does hit his one copy of Rusted Sword. I think he plays one or two. But he hits a Rusted Sword. Oh, but he's already got the air balloon attached. Otherwise, <laughs> he could have had the KO. I think Skylar is... No, you can't Skylar here. You have to use Gust no matter what. So you're forced to use boss's orders. But then your only fear factor is that you need to boss two turns in a row if Ricardo can knock out uh, your Zacian. So... We are going to see an energy commitment. He's going to put it onto a Crobat, so he has no liabilities in play whatsoever. You do just go for the boss's orders here. And I think you always go for the Arcus Dialga Palkia. 
uh, because you want you don't want to pay retreat here. You want to keep your Zashin nice and healthy on the bench. You want to ultimate ray as many cards out of your deck as possible so that you don't have any dead draws at this point. You can just go ahead and swing it on to Morwile. He set himself up for game really nicely. Yeah, he's in a great position. You know, I'm a little bit sad he couldn't just attach the Rusted Sword, Skylar for a switch and <laughs> swing for that giant KO. That's what I would have loved, but it doesn't really matter. Like you say, he's in a phenomenal position here. One more attack for the game, and there is a Zashin with free energy attached. That is pretty big. Having said that, the Rusted Sword is needed to get a KO on the ADP, and there is already an air balloon on the Zashim. So we are going to need to see some gusting here. Yeah, he's holding on to boss's orders for next turn, so that's pretty chill right now. But if Ricardo can disrupt his hand uh, with... It looks like... Let's see how many Marnie Ricardo actually plays here. I don't think he actually plays any. Wow, okay, so he has no hand disruption. So I think he's just got no outs here. If he's got no hand disruption, that's basically game, because Luke has got an attacker... And he's got boss's orders, so yeah. All Luca needs to do here is promote the Zashim, play the boss's orders onto literally any of those Pokemon on the bench, and just click to attack and win the game. So what we've basically seen is Ricardo has just been doing Luca things one turn behind. And you can't be doing that, not in a mirror match. You've got to jump ahead in the game in some way. Ricardo's not able to do that. So Luca Brave Blades goes up one game to zero, and quite frankly, that turn one GX attack seems like it had a little bit of an impact in the outcome of that game. Yeah, your win rate as Arceus Yalga Palkia when you get that turn one GX attack is absolutely insane. And <laughs> identifying that he can make that push, knowing that he basically has nowhere else to go, right? He already has a Dedenne GX just forced into play because he started with it. So he couldn't try and go for the bench management. I'll deal with your small Pokemon first and get the first three prize knockout. He had to say, you know what, if I don't get the GX attack here, I never win this game. And it's actually really interesting looking at Ricardo's deck. He has, like, only plan A cards. He has no backup plan, no reset stamp, not even any Marnies in his deck. And he even just plays um, Viridian Forest. So he is all about just getting plan A off. And it actually turned out that Luca was able to achieve that first. Absolutely. I mean, bearing in mind, these players have come very far in a very large tournament. Whatever plans they've got have very much been working <laughs> up to now. But what we saw there was a quintessential mirror match. We saw both players doing very similar things. And essentially, the turn one GX attack just allowed Luca to jump ahead. And from there, Ricardo wasn't able to essentially jump back over and take the initiative. And unfortunately, that is enough to get the win in the game. So let's head on over to game two. Both players still playing the same deck as each other, though with small differences, of course, and see if we're going to see a turn one GX attack this game. I'm going to be honest, I kind of like it. <laughs> and uh, Ricardo is actually still choosing to go first. So I do like this. I think just in general, you need less pieces. Luca had to really dig deep to find that combination. He's actually drawn into an incredible hand to try and do it again, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> <He has. laughs> uh, but Ricardo is just going to say, I can just do the stable game plan and hope that it forces Luca to make those pushes. And either that he misses from the pushes that he makes with the Denes and Crobats, or that those liabilities are around for me to boss his orders later. And we see that the players want to go first here. Ricardo has chosen to go first. And that means that if you win game one, as Luca did, even if Luca loses game two, gets the choice of whether to go first or second in game three. So this is this is kind of like a kind of like a bonus game for Luca. If you win, brilliant, you're 2-0, you go through. If you lose, you're going into game three, but you've got the advantage of being able to choose to go first. So that's a really nice place to be. And this time, Ricardo is forced into having one of those little Pokemon to start with that you frankly don't want on the field. And Luca draws into Metal Saucer, which is not ideal for him. So it looks like he may be forced to use his own Dedenne here. He could use Energy Spinner for three targets. He could just go ahead and get rid of a bunch of Metal Energies, or at least two copies, potentially. He's going to go for all three. He could just go for Quick Ball into Dede Change if he is going to look for that turn one GX attack. But his hand is just much more awkward this time. He'll already be getting rid of a couple of Metal Saucers and he'll already be getting rid of uh, one of his energy switches. So he may end up instead just going for Arcus Dialga Palkia and hoping that the three cards from Intrepid Sword is going to be good enough instead. 
That very much is one way to go here. I mean, we do see the free energy there. Searching through the deck, really trying to make sure what's in there, but does not seem to be wavering from those three. Of course, it's always nice to look at your prizes in the early game or look at your deck, try and figure out what's in the prizes so you don't do that silly thing where you're digging for that last metal saucer, which it turns out is prized. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, to Dene here, you would lose a bunch of resources that you don't really want to lose. And I was okay. thinking about a second Zash in it because it does at least open up... I mean, double metal saucer. Oh, there's no switch. Double metal saucer switch would actually have potentially given a... Oh, there's no second energy in the discard either. We're, yeah, we're missing a couple of pieces, but I think he may be saying, well, plan A is off the table. We're going aggro Zashkin. <laughs> it's actually uh, a game plan you can go for with this deck uh, fairly competently. He's even holding on to energy switch pieces anyway next turn. He has finally drawn into a supporter, which is something for him. So this isn't, you know, writing off Arceus Dialgapalkia just yet, but this just gives him the avenue for both sort of approaches. Because one thing that's really good for the Zacian, if he's able to limit his bench, you know, it's really difficult for Arceus Dialgapalkia to hit you for one shot. So you're looking to go for alter creation, and then you need to get a Zacian out of nowhere, which is really hard to achieve. So there still is a route here where you go without ADP. And we actually don't see a switch out for Ricardo. That is so not good. Just an attach and pass, no GX attack. That's a huge deal. That is, yeah, that's absolutely huge. He's got, you know, six cards in hand still, but no switch there. I mean, like we said, if you go second, you also if you go first, you expect to get that first GX attack. I mean, Luca's a way off at the moment, but energy switch, energy could get it. But it looks like Luca, like you say, is going for the aggro Zash in here, which I quite like. Could energy switch that third energy up? And it looks like he's going to. And that is going to get a KO on the Morile super quickly. And then that puts Ricardo in a potentially awkward situation because, you know, Luca's taken a KO and had another attack before Ricardo even starts dealing any damage on the board. So... Yeah, it looks like that's just a turn. And we do see not using the Marnie here because essentially thinking, you know what? Ricardo didn't do very much last turn. So, yeah, let's just leave him with it. Yeah, the boss's orders is the biggest question. I actually really like boss's orders here. I do. You're foregoing a couple of cards, but only allowing that GS attack and stopping ultimate ray is such good value for you. So playing this boss's orders down, it does mean that your Marnie has a lot of legwork to do next turn where you need to find switch air balloon or need to find some more energy switch shenanigans. But this pressure is just so good. Denying ultimate ray is a huge win condition for you. Absolutely. It basically means that Ricardo's got whatever energy he can get this turn and then he's essentially down three prizes. That's the energy he's got on the board. They're the attackers he's got available. And th this isn't, like you say, this is not plan A. This is not what you're <laughs> trying to do. But the really good players are able to do this. The really good players are able to look at their hand and go, I don't think my ADP is going to do ADP things this game. Um, all right, aggro Zashin it is. Looks like Ricardo is going to establish a big charm, which can really be quite useful when Luca hasn't used that GX attack uh, to gain the buff. So his Zashin is now sitting out of range of Blade, Blade, which is really important. He's already got an energy attachment as well. So he'll probably just end on this GX, basically sacrificing his Arceus Dialgapalkia, but then putting himself on a two-turn clock to win as long as he can maintain attackers. Absolutely. Do we... Ah, now there is no Rusted Sword on the Zashin, so... Maybe we could see a pivot at some point, that that weird mid-game GX attack that you don't usually see. But if you're fairly sure you're not going to get one hit KO'd, that is actually a genuine option of just going, ah, you know what, let's give it a go. Now, Moro comes down <laughs> and gets more oil. They're Spider-Manning each other. They're just saying, <laughs> get onto the bench. Come join me. <laughs> and we're going to see the money. Looking for switch outs here. Luca, now that he has committed a more while into play, it means he can still push for things like the Dene now because he's already got that liability. Why not have a couple more? So we are going to see that Cherish Ball. It means immediately Dede change here. Still looking for switch outs. He can get a manual attachment in if he wants to, but if he wants to keep the door open for Arcus de Alga Palkia, it means that he doesn't. But now he's just going to commit it to Morwal. Morwal can finish off this heavily damaged Arcus de Alga Palkia. And we do see the air balloon, but no energy switches, and there are actually no targets for this metal saucer. So a bit of a stumbling block for him. 
No, that is, it, it looks so good, but there's no switch to combo with the air balloon. There's metal saucer, but there's no energy in the discard. There's no energy switch. It's, it's just leave a free energy Zash in the active and intrepid sword. That is far from ideal. And we haven't denied the ultimate ray. So an energy attachment boss's orders from Ricardo here would just give a, just a phenomenal advantage in the game. Yeah, I think they should actually be pushing for um, trying to get their Zashin into Lucas this turn. It would just take away so many sources. Lucas nowhere near able to ultimate ray, and it could just run him out of attackers in general here. But based on Ricardo's hand, he's just going to swing the water energy into the Arcus Dialgapalkia, looking for boss's orders of his own by the looks of things. Yeah, grabbing that to Dene, like you say, there's enough liabilities on his bench that Dene is absolutely on the table now, literally and figuratively. <laughs> And, I mean, boss's orders is going to be big here. Like you say, trying to get rid of that Zashin and the energy would have been good. But I'm not sure it makes a huge difference. I think if Ricardo takes a pri at KO here, then he's on the clock to win next turn. Mm -hmm. And Luca's not taking six prizes during his next true. turn. Yeah, true. Just for the prize map alone, this is fine. And you're also able now to power up multiple attackers. So even if Luca does take a KO on anything, you're still just there, ready to rumble. So does draw into boss's orders. It's a huge turn. He's just one attack away from winning the game. Luca can boss's orders up uh, Zashian, but he currently can't knock out the one with the big charm. He would have to find his own copy of Rusted Sword to deny it. And even then, there's going to be another Zashian now almost ready to rumble. Yeah, I mean, we got a free energy Zashian, a two energy Zashian. We've got the ADP in the active. Only one KO needed. And we said about Zashian going aggro can win, and it can, but unfortunately, what we've seen here is not the ideal circumstance. Missing attacks, missing some of those pieces you need. It was a good idea from Luca, and in another game, there's a very good chance it would have worked. This game, it is not going the way he wanted. And it looks like Luca's not going to struggle to get a KO. He's got boss's orders. He's got great catcher. But the problem is, Ricardo is just going to take a KO next turn. Yeah, there's, there's nothing Luca has in his deck that can prevent that, unfortunately. So, yeah, he's going to take the three prizes and say, maybe Ricardo accidentally misclicks on Intrepid Sword. <laughs> That's the win condition. <laughs> unfortunately, that is the win condition. If, um, if Ricardo is able to successfully click Brave Blade, he is going to win this second game. I like Luca not just hitting the concede button. You may as well let the opponent do every action that they have to to actually close here. And Ricardo is just going for Great Catcher just in case he uh, doesn't have the right numbers. But yeah, he does just announce that Brave Blade in the end. Just so the mind goes from Luca saying, I'm not done yet. You've got to draw more cards, do more things if you want to win. But no, Ricardo does announce Brave Blade successfully for those last three prize cards. No, absolutely. That was, it was a very different kind of game. Like, we, you know, we didn't see that explosive turn one GX attack. We saw Luca go for Zashin plays, which looked for a little while like they might actually work and finish out the game. But unfortunately, the ADP that did ADP things ended up winning. And I think a lot of the time, that's probably what's going to happen. Luca, he did not have the luck of the draw that game. But like I said at the beginning of that game, it, that was kind of like a free game for Luca. He's going into game three. He's got the choice to go first. And he's got to feel pretty good about his chances because it's not going to go that badly again. And he's going to be going first. It's going to be a bit of confidence there. Yeah, this time he can go much more conventional. Uh, he tried the unconventional route, missed the switch out, which then allowed Ultimate Ray to then just, you know, take prizes and set up three attackers. So you're not coming back from that one. An unfortunate miss from him. But this time he can go for the tried and trusted GX and look for boss's orders. Absolutely. And like every good mirror match, we are tied at one game apiece. So let's go and have that deciding third game to see which of these players is going to move on through the winner's bracket. Remember, we are in winner's round six here, which means winning this game will put them on a win and in. If you win winner's round seven, you will get through to the global finals as one of the top four finishers in your region. Looks like a mulligan from Luca. No valid targets, so he's going to have to shuffle back into the deck, get a fresh hand, and allow Ricardo an additional draw here until he's able to find himself a valid Pokemon. He does find Arceus Dialgapalkia, but a non-mover of a hand. His turn one looks good, but then he needs to draw some cards. So two draws to get out of a pretty funky situation.
That is a... Oh, that's Four. not bad. <laughs> really nice. Now he has the <laughs> ideal turn. He can grab Zashin and he can uh, attach and then get the metal source of value an additional three. So, yeah, everything's looking rosy now. Yeah, that, that quick ball is a phenomenal card. <laughs> and now, as long as he draws something off into... Oh! Okay, well, it allows him to at least try and take a tempo boss's orders KO next turn if nothing else goes well for him. But that's a surprising three cards uh, based on how many metal energies you already had. But you never say no to those additional energy cards. You're now ready to Brave Blade. So intimidating stuff. And Ricardo may have to play around aggressive Brave Blade again. I'm not sure if I'm happy with that if I'm Luca or not. I mean, on the one <laughs> hand, you love seeing two energy off of that Intrepid Sword. On the other hand, when you just want one card to get you rolling and start <laughs> getting a bit of tempo next turn and you draw two energy in a balloon, it's, it's very strange. Of course, like you say, balloon, retreat ADP, boss's orders, you've got a Brave Blade KO, but at that stage, your hand is two metal energy plus whatever you draw plus whatever your prizes are. So... And it, this didn't work last game. Luca's got to be thinking, I tried this last game and it didn't work. <laughs> Agro Zashian failed me. Does he want to go down that route again? Yeah, it, it's just entirely based on the draw again, if that can help him out. Again, Ricardo's never going to bail him here. There are no Marnies in his list. So Luca's stuck with his hand no matter what. Ricardo has that early game quick ball, can discard one of his more wild GX. He does play two copies, so really can aggressively attack the opponent's hand and limit their draw Pokemon outs at times. Luca currently not sat on any of those. Ricardo's going to go ahead and grab his uh, ADP. Also going to switch straight into it. And we also see a Rusted Sword. Looks like he's setting up for a supporter play here. Probably Professor's Research with all the hand cards that he's playing immediately as he looks for energy for turn. Actually gets rid of the Viridian Forest. So he's... That could have been a card that just allowed Luca to get that GX attack. So not using his own stadium to try and make life more difficult for Luca really heads up play. Oh, yeah. You don't want to just hand your opponent a GX attack. So, oh, that's a nice top deck. Gets <laughs> a to awesome. Dene. It's going to get him a new hand of six cards. But, I mean, what do you want to do here? Do you want to go for the boss's orders onto the Zashian and then play the Dene to set up for next turn? Or do you just play the Dene hoping to get a water energy or a Viridian Forest, get the first GX attack? And honestly, the way we've seen these games go so far, you've got to think that first GX attack is um, it's going to be what people are going for here. Yeah, so here's the problem. Luca will be the one putting down his own Dedene. So if he does put down Dedene GX, he'd also need to be putting down, you know, a Morwell to then force Ricardo's Pokemon into play. Or alternatively, you leave the Rusted Sword open as an opportunity for your own Zashin so you can deal with the ADP itself post GX attack. So... With the balloon to the active, that tells me that he keeps his option open to retreat attack if he wants to. So he's eyeing up his boss's orders. He might just be going for aggro two prize KO here. Instead, does forego it. Goes for the new additional six cards. Looking for energy spinner or <coughs> a water. Plays two of each, but doesn't find one. No, unfortunately not. I was thinking maybe he'd use the boss's orders to potentially drag up the Zashin just to potentially buy time. So you could use a GX attack while forcing your opponent to have a switch to get their own GX attack. But it looks like we got a Brave wow. Blade into the ADP. It's not a KO, it's not a GX attack. And this is starting to look a lot more like game two than it did game one. And they chose not to turn attach either. Luca could have re-established that energy onto his ADP if he wanted to, chose not to. Just held it instead. I'm really surprised that we didn't see him re-establish the energy that he lost retreating here. But I do still think that Brave Blade is a reasonable play. Uh, he has the switch air balloon combo this time, or he can switch and turn attach to Dedene. So he can knock out the ADP and deny the ultimate ray. So this time it will be happening, at least. Ricardo's going to put down another ADP here and switch into it. Now it looks like he's going to be energy switching, so... Oh, no! The play that Luca wanted to make is being denied by Ricardo. He's got a fresh and healthy ADP into play. Looks like he just needs to find the water energy on his end here. Yeah, it's, like I say, parallel plays in the mirror match. It's all starting to look startlingly familiar. And, and this is so big from Ricardo, making Luca have the gusting. But even if he's got the gusting, he's not getting rid of the energy. And that's what was so good about the KO. It wasn't just taking free prizes. It was making sure that Ricardo had 
basically no energy on the board after using the GX attack. That is not the position we're in here, and that is going to be awkward. Do, do you hit into another ADP? Do you take a KO not denying the energy? Do you try and get your own GX attack a turn later? None of these seem like optimal plays. We'll see. Ricardo does find the water energy, so there is going to be a GX attack here. Really smart to have maneuvered things onto a new Arceus Yalgapalkia. Rick, the only real way Luca can punish this, oh, he can't even punish it really with Rusted Sword because he still hasn't GX attacked. So, yeah, it's going to be more switch, like awkward switch plays by the looks of things. And uh, just trying to hit into this next ADP. But Ricardo's maneuvered a way for him to guarantee the ultimate raise. So, really smart decision from him. And Luca's still on an awkward hand. And what does he do? I mean, he could draw more cards by playing that second to Dene, but his opponent is potentially on Ultimate Ray next turn. You've got to think they are. And then there would be two little Pokemon that are in range of Ultimate Ray. So you really don't want to play that second to Dene because it gives your opponent such a good map of prizes to try and win. But if you don't play that second to Dene, what exactly are you doing? <laughs> We could have seen the energy switch over to ADP. He's always going to reset this Metal Saucer here. So either he tries to just retreat into Zacian. The Big Charm's not doing anything at this stage. That missed turn attachment last turn as well really is, I think, haunting Luca a little bit here because it's just far less likely for him to get a Alter Creation GX. I feel like he could have just GX'd into Ricardo this turn or pushed for that play. Um, as best he could. The big charm does mean that your Dene is out of gust range, which I do think is really important here. So a big draw for him. We will see the attachment, and he probably just holds this Dene GX in his hand. Yeah, so he is going to Brave Blade now. It means that he's forced to Dene change next turn, but he's really just hoping that this keeps Ricardo out of range for a turn. And the good news here is that the GX attack isn't really needed at this stage because you've got two ADPs which are very much in range. You could potentially use a Morale to get a KO if you wanted to in Eternal 2's time. They're both GX Pokemon, so Great Catcher could be used in addition to Boss's Orders, which is always a great position to be in. So I think what Luca wants to do here is really just try and finish off those two ADP, ignore the GX attack for the second game in a row, <laughs> And you, I think you said a second ago, Joe, I, I don't really know what Ricardo KOs this turn. Now the big charm is on Dedene, I'm not sure there's a nice easy prize sitting there. Yeah, the short answer is he can't take a KO this turn. <laughs> Especially with two metal sources already in the discard pile, it would be outrageous for him to be able to establish a Zashin out of nowhere. Two energy switch, two saucer already in the discard, so it's a lot to ask for if Ricardo goes reaching for them. Um, so Lucas put himself two attacks away, and he basically, with this big charm draw, he's tried to put Ricardo three turns away. So, you know, as long as Luca can make the push next turn, if Ricardo doesn't use any other more wild plays, I think there's only one in his discard pile right now, really, it's more wild that would be backbreaking for Luca here. That would be a very, very bad time. And, I mean, you've got to think that Ricardo's thinking that as well. Boss's orders, more Ryle, oh, both or... more wilds are gone. Okay. Oh. That's not on the table either. He's not thinking that then. <laughs> I thought there was only one, but both have gone. So that's not even on the table. One source of one energy drop. So it looks like he will be pushing here. Try and find switch out plus energy switch. Play two of each. There's a switch. Wow, oh. so we're pushing with Dedene here. I mean, you use the word outrageous, Joe, and I agree with you. There's so <laughs> many resources in the discard that you don't think this is actually going to work. Wait, there was another metal... Oh, there was a metal saucer, but no metal energy stuck in the in discard. Hand. Yeah, stuck in his hand. So it is just energy switch. This is a very, um... He still uh, has the water. Skylar isn't out for him as well now. It's a you confident a play. Charm? Yeah, it, it's a big push. You see another Rusted Sword. These cards aren't super helpful. There is a Crobat for three cards for an extra push. You knew Crobat was coming there. You don't play those cards unless you're going to do something like Crobat or, you know, something that's going to mess with your hand. I'm actually so... kind of surprised. The Big Charm could have been on the Zashin instead because, you know, Luca's not GX attacked. He could have guarded against that a little bit more, but making the full push here with a Professor's Research, five cards remaining in his deck, is he able to piece together one of his last two energy switches? If he does, I mean, then it's... Luca's down two sources as well, you know. Wow! Oh, he's not! That's huge! And not even enough cards in his deck to go for an Intrepid Sword either. Just a hard pass. 
Uh, Luca oh. can't simply announce the attack, which he really wants to do. So they're going to have to push here with dead eight change by the looks of things. If they oh, want getting to a KO. But getting this KO would be so good. Getting that energy off the board, bearing in mind all four Metal Saucer are gone. There's a couple of energy switch that have already hit the discard. There's five cards left in deck. If, if ever there was a turn you really wanted to start getting rid of your opponent's energy, this was it. And Luca might even get in a position where he's just like, I can take my time because actually you don't have enough energy. But it looks like we are going for a boss's orders off the Eldegoss here. I'm trying and... to look at Ricardo's outs, you know. Uh, Luca could just end up stalling something here to win yeah, the game. I, I think there's four switches in the discard pile for Ricardo. Ricardo plays 11 energy. There's a number of them already in the discard pile, so Luca may have identified the number of outs remaining. He could boss his orders up the backup Zashin here with that two retreat cost and just buy more time. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, bearing in mind, you know, Air Balloon's not going to help even if there's any left because it's already got a rusted sword on there. But no. Really interesting. Okay, so they've backed out of this play. I think maybe just because of the number of energy switches keeps Ricardo live for retreat outs. So instead, just filling his board up with the Elder Goss, definitely should be thinking about the play before <laughs> making it. But uh, is going to back out of this, find himself Spinner, still missing the switch outs by the looks of things. Yeah, yeah. I think we must have seen a change in in plan there because you don't elder goss for a supporter and then just mm -hmm. discard it. There's no there's no real reason to do that. But it's what we see, you know. Players changing plans on the fly. One minute they're thinking, you know what, I can boss this stall here and I, and I can just bring up that Zashin and potentially run him out of cards. And then you start second guessing yourself and you go, well, what if he's got this? Well, what if he does this? And then you completely change. But it does look like we are going to have some gusting here, just with the great catcher instead. Onto that damaged ADP and then a Marnie. So, really just trying to limit Ooh, his opponent's nice. hand size. Yeah, well, that's good. Switch finds energy switch as well, so he can finish off the ADP with his own and take three prizes. Then he's just looking for boss's orders. So, that great catcher, really timely, actually keeps Luca's clock in check where he's just two attacks away. So, exactly. We are going to see the switch here. He can energy switch onto ADP and use Ultimate Ray. I think that has to be the best move here. Oh, yeah. And you can even replace the energy with Metal Saucer as soon as you mm. do that. Yeah, so, no, I pull even more out the deck so there's no stall targets. This is looking great. <laughs> it is. And this is the thing. We look at the Elder Goss for the boss's orders, then change the mind and just discard it. And we go, well, didn't really need the Elder Goss there. And then we see the turn play out, and you're just kind of like, well, this totally worked out. This was very <laughs> much the best play to go for. And I guess, yeah, there are no other helpful Pokemon in his deck anyway, so the board management isn't a big deal unless prizes come into play. Um, but now getting a second Zashin established, having both of them being threats after this ultimate ray is going to be great for him. And I also like him holding the Metal Saucer, faint an awkward hand, uh, and give himself more options for next turn. Absolutely. Now we see those three prizes coming down. And potentially, Luca now is just, you know, one turn away, one KO away from winning. Oh, it's he can actually the... float up for a KO, so that's why he benched it. Oh! Float up could actually finish the game for him. <laughs> that's amazing! <laughs> so that's why it's in play. Oh, that is wonderful. I completely missed that one. And I love seeing KOs with weird attacks like that. That makes me so happy. <laughs> All right, and he takes the boss's orders from prize cards. Looking pretty good for him here. Ricardo, you know, he can take a knockout onto the Arcus Dialga Palkia. He's got the damage buff and the Rusted Sword down, so he can take three prizes. Once again, though, doesn't play any hand disruption, so Lucas wrapped this up. It really does look like he has. You know, this, this has been a weird game to watch. It's been kind of like, <laughs> he's in a great position. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Oh, maybe he is. I don't know. What's that Elder Goss doing? And then we turn around, <laughs> and all of a sudden, it looks like Luca is just about to, to take home that 2-1 victory. And, I mean, Luca has played this game so, so well. That last turn was just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, he's 4D chess this game, seeing the float up play. <laughs> that's really cool. I was thinking he was looking at outs and then just realized that there was other things in the deck that could have stopped Ricardo. But having that nice uh, backup plan, if everything else went to pot, meant that he had that play open to him, did get the boss's orders from the prize cards. That's going to be enough for him to simply brave blade his way through the game. No GX attack needed, no ADP at all used that game outside of just air ballooning and 
switching in and out, <laughs> the aggroization plan finally in that game three was worth it. It's not very often we see an ADP mirror match where one player only uses Creation GX once in three games. It's even rarer that that player is the one who ends up victorious. <laughs> but it's just down to what we talked about earlier and about being adaptive. Looking at your hand, looking at the board, looking at your opponent and going, right, what is it that is going to win me this game? We did not see Luca do the optimal strategy there. That is not the way that game is supposed to go. But... It worked out wonderfully. Two attacks into ADP, neither of which getting a KO. That is not generally how you want to start the game. But then you deny prizes for a little while, and we see Ricardo whiffing a switch at one point, which would have been huge in that game. And then all of a sudden, that's how it ends. Yeah, Ricardo made that big push, got to a five card deck, just wasn't able to find the energy switch that was crucial, like you say. And, you know, Luca took that hedge. He was saying, you know, this is the only way I'm keeping up. Um, <laughs> Even Ricardo displayed some great plays, even in the games that he lost. You know, he pivoted from one uh, Arceus Tiago Palkia to another one, allowing himself to maintain that ultimate ray, made sure that he still had enough resources left. But Luca just kept track of that stuff the entire time. How many sources had gone, how many switches had gone, uh, meant that, you know, he was able to go in with that Zacian and force uh, Ricardo to have that big push and eventually miss. Absolutely. The harder you make it for your opponent, the more likely it is they're not going to get it. And if any of you out there have been hearing about this ADP deck and going, what's it all about? You just got an absolute clinic there from two fantastic players just changing on the fly, doing their thing. We saw classic ADP gameplay. We saw weird gameplay. We saw completely no ADP. Let's just go straight for Zashim. We saw a lot that game, and that was... That was